Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are going further with the concept of normal stress. And what we want to do now is we want to identify what the normal stress is in different parts of this member. And this is a cylindrical member that just has two sections that, uh, that have different radii. So this one here has uh, the 10 millimeter radius, and this section here has a 20 millimeter radius. And we want to know that when we subject this to this 50 kilonewtons of tension, uh, what is the normal stress going to be in this part? Let's call this part one and uh, and somewhere along here in part two. So the way that we do this is simple, just from the last video, if you remember, we have stress, which we denote, normal stress, which we denote with uh, lowercase sigma sign, is just equal to P over A. So this is our applied force over our cross-sectional area. And this really comes back to our free body diagram where uh, we, if we section this, then the internal normal stress, basically, if you sum it all up, you just get a, uh, a, a resultant force, which is equal and opposite to this tensile force, or if it was compressive, equal and opposite. And that force actually passes through the centroid of the, the cross-sectional area, and uh, that just gives us our centrically loaded axial forces, and then everything balances out, and this thing stays in static equilibrium. So. All we need to do then is we just need to figure out what are our areas here. So for area one, the area of a circle, uh, let's say area one is just pi r squared. And uh, we have here our radius is 0 0.1 millimeters. And so that gives us a cross-sectional area of 314.16 millimeters squared. All right, while we're at it, let's just go ahead and calculate our area for this uh, larger cross section here in section two. So we get pi r squared, and that is just pi times 0 0.2 millimeters squared, and that gives us a cross sectional area of 1256.64, uh, sorry, 64 millimeters squared. All right, now all we have to do is we basically just plug these in. So let's maybe do uh, area one here first. So for the normal stress, if we were to take some cross section at any point here in, oh sorry, in area one, in any point here in area one, the, uh, the normal stress in area one would just be sigma one is equal to P over A. So we have 50 kilonewtons over our area here, which is 314.16 millimeters squared. And when you run that, you just get 0 0.159 uh, kilonewtons per millimeter squared. Now, if you remember, if you were watching the last video, this is a weird unit. And uh, when, I f when you first look at this, you might not really know what that is, because really what we were trying to do is get this into some variation of pascals, whether it's kilopascals, megapascals, or gigapascals. So if you just do the unit conversion here, you'll see that we actually get 159 million newtons per meter squared, which is just 159 times 10 to the 6 pascals. And when we have pascals times 10 to the 6, this is the same thing as 159 megapascals, just like that. So that would be the normal stress here uh, at any point here within section 1. Um, if we wanted to go ahead and solve for section 2 now, let's switch back to black. So then our normal stress here for section two, well again we just do our force over our area, so we have uh, 50 kilonewtons over that area, and that was 1256.64 millimeters squared, and that gives us a, uh, a value here of 0 0.0389 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. Now, it is probably a good thing to uh, to memorize, actually, there's two things here. Uh, the units of, if we have kilonewtons per millimeter squared, 
if you have a number with these units, this is actually giving you the number in gigapascals. This is just not a bad thing to memorize. Uh, and also, if you have newtons per millimeter squared, if you have a number in those units, that is already in megapascals. So when you see that, uh, when we have kilonewtons per millimeter squared, what this is also saying is, uh, without doing this unit conversion here, uh, we can just jump to knowing that this is actually 0 0.0389 gigapascals. And gigapascals are just a thousand times, uh, it's off by a factor of a thousand. So if we just multiply this by a thousand, we bring the decimal place over. So one, two, three, and uh, this is equal to 38.9 megapascals. Now, the other way that we can do this, if, you're, uh, if, if you don't like doing it that way, is uh, these units here, let's maybe, uh, let's bring this down. So we have 0 0.0389 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. Well, this is a thousand newtons. So we can just rewrite this as, uh, we can bring this decimal place over one, two, three. So we have 38.9 newtons per meter, millimeter squared. And then we can look here and say, well, if we have newtons per millimeter squared, that is the same units as megapascals. So this is equal to 38.9 megapascals. So that's two ways to arrive at the, the internal normal stress here in section two. And, uh, and if you forget these conversions or you just don't feel like memorizing them, uh, we can always just come straight back to the unit conversion and put it in units of pascals and then figure out what the prefix that's most appropriate for this. And in this case, it would be using megapascals. So there we go. We found uh, for, this, uh, for this member here that has two distinct sections with different cross-sectional areas, we found uh, under the what under the given loading conditions what the normal stresses are in section one here, and what the normal stresses are in section two here.